Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Today we have Unleashing the Power of Stratosphere UX. If at any point today you have a question or comment and would like to place it in the chat or Q&A feature, please do so. This webinar is being recorded and you'll receive a link to the recording within a few business days. Today our presenters are James O'Regan, Product Marketing Manager with Liquidware, and Chris Walker, Senior Solutions Architect and Stratosphere UX Expert with Liquidware. James is going to kick things off for today. Here you go, James. Thanks very much. Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar. We are delighted to have you here. Um, and as uh, we said, the title of the webinar is Unleashing the Power of Stratosphere UX. So this is all about some use cases which we think will be really useful for yourselves. So just to get started with an agenda, just you know, a brief intro, um, we'll then go through the use cases, and then we're gonna finish off with a demo of our new UI for Stratosphere UX. So in terms of presenters, um, my name is James O'Regan. I'm I'm product marketing manager. Joining me today is Chris Walker. Chris is one of our Stratosphere UX SMEs, and he's also a, a senior solutions architect. So we'll be taking you through this presentation today, and um, you know you can have the ability to ask some questions, and um, we'll answer them if we have time, or we can answer them after the uh, webinar. So. Uh, let's get going. So let's look at, um, just for anyone who might be new to Liquidware, what do Liquidware do? Liquidware, essentially, we do digital workspace management. And we have three solutions um, that focus on different areas of um, digital workspace management. So starting with user environment management, we have Profile Unity, which is all about delivering a superior, fully featured uh, user environment management solution. We then have our application layering solution, which is FlexApp. FlexApp is an advanced application layering. It can be integrated with our UEM profile Unity, and it's also easy to manage. FlexApp also comes in a kind of standalone, which is we call FlexApp One, and that can be delivered through modern uh, platforms such as Intune and you know from the cloud. So, but our focus today is around our monitoring and diagnostic solution, and that is Stratosphere UX. So. Stratosphere UX is a sophisticated digital experience monitoring to, uh, solution, and we, you know, we take you from onboarding um, through everyday user metrics. And Stratosphere UX, you know, can gather an amazing amount of data. And you know, what we're going to demonstrate today are five use cases where we can really um, deliver value to you as a customer with Stratosphere UX. So just to briefly look at some of the advantages of Stratosphere UX. So you've got workspace transparency across all major platforms, be that Azure, AWS, Google Cloud, on-prem, it doesn't matter. We we can we can work across all those different platforms. You know, you can we can support all the tiers of your desktop support. Um, you know, we, we've got data sharing across functional teams. So, you know, all the information is there for troubleshooting, for reporting, metrics, all of that kind of stuff. So we've got a really expansive set of metrics. Um, you know, we can do near uh, real-time uh, daily trending. And we also have, and we're going to cover this as one of the works uh, use cases, we have data integration with um, outside solutions like ServiceNow, Remedy, and Power BI. So this diagram just is a demonstration of how we can um, deliver that data across platforms and across functions. Um, so yeah, you can see, you know, we've got all the various different platforms and the various different cross-functional teams. So um, we're going to we're going to present five different use cases today. So um, I'm going to pass it over to Chris. So over to you, Chris. Thanks, James. So like James was talking about, Stratosphere has multiple uses. And so they can't really cover them all. We probably take about five days just to go through all the different use cases that our customers have come up with with our, with our data. The first one, let's talk about reducing license costs, especially in the economy as the way it is today. Everybody's looking to reclaim those dollars, uh, make equipment last longer, and still keep their users happy. So next slide. And next slide. All right, so first thing, license recovery. I've bought um, 1,000 copies of Visio and only 100 people are using it. So pretty easy use case, find out where the licenses are, um, what applications, everybody wanted a copy of Snagit 10 years ago. I'm still paying for Snagit today. 
There's a window snipping tool, and most of the customers or most of my users actually have switched over to the snipping tool. So why am I still paying for Snagit? So recovering those licenses um, from those users that aren't using them, um, and not only on top of that, the license cost, but also the maintenance. I keep having to upgrade these, upgrading my base image in the cloud, where on workstations, SCCM, Intune, so the IT staff time as well to deploy these applications, keep them updated, deal with any vulnerabilities that, that may be in the applications as well. Next slide. Reducing cloud cost. We've done this a lot with Amazon, Azure, and even some Google GCC, uh, GCP customers. So this is a good one with Stratosphere monitoring how much the users are actually inside the virtual machines. Are they getting their work done? Do they have enough CPU memory? Are they right-sized? Are the users actually on the right tier of machine to get their work done in the environment? Have I maybe over-purchased, which could be just as bad because I'm spending too much money? So maybe uh, Amazon or, or Azure said, hey, Chris, you, you can get 15 people per machine uh, with your workload. Then I go up there, I start working and find out, well, crap, I can only get eight. But well, potentially with Stratosphere, we could optimize that environment using our optimization technology as well as move the machines around. So instead of 50 tier uh, three machines, I buy 25 tier five machines. They cost more, but they act, each machine costs more, but I've got half the resources that I've purchased from, from that company. So we've done analysis like that. Uh, one customer just in one year, we we're going to save them over a million dollars in cost just by doing that analysis and right-sizing his infrastructure. Because he was told by the architects, you need 50 of these machines, you need to be on this tier, but the real data inside of Stratosphere told us different. We were able to watch how the users interacted, how the application performed, even different versions of the application as well. So you can constantly tune your environment. Remember, this is living, breathing machines. Every time you upgrade that application, uh, change new features, things like that, you need to reanalyze your data. Next slide. All right. Now we're going to talk about integration with ServiceNow. So a lot of our customers you know, love the Stratosphere data. As James talked about, we have a massive amount of data. And I don't think anybody's ever said, you don't have enough data to me. So everything from the applications, the servers, the storage, the endpoints, the networks, the users, all of those perspectives across all these different platforms. They want to bring that data into the hands of the ticketing people. So the frontline workers who answer the call say, hello, Chris Walker, what can I do for you today? How, what kind of problem are you having? Oh, what machine are you running on? Are you in VDI or is it your physical machine? So look, having all that data at the fingertips of the people that are actually answering the phones to be able to resolve that hopefully within the first call. Not just, hey, can you reboot your machine and call me back tomorrow? Next slide. So here's an example of some of our sample metrics in Stratosphere. I don't know if you've seen, ever seen this before. Make, model, serial number, machine, the hard drive type, monitor resolution, even the serial number, make, and model of the monitors themselves. Uh, your user's distinct name, Wi-Fi, SSID, is an encrypted, CPU temperature, battery health, you name it, Stratosphere probably has the data. And they want to get that in the hand, so literally I can just ask the user, as a help desk, I can ask the user, What's your login ID? Chris Walker. I pull up that information. I can see you're on the HP Z book. Your temperature, your CPU is currently this. You're too far from your access point. You're dropping packets. All of that data would be right there in the hands of the service ticketing people. Next slide. All right, so what happens when you integrate Stratosphere with, with ServiceNow? As you can see here, each one of these connectors for ServiceNow costs money. So to integrate my SCCM, my Intune, my VMware, my Citrix, my cloud connectors, and then I have to have a, an IT staff that does nothing but ServiceNow programming to maintain all of those connections. All those connections also mean I need a larger ServiceNow instance so I can pull in and manage all of that data. When you bring in Stratosphere into a ServiceNow connection, sometimes I can reduce or remove those connections because I have better data and a lot faster data. So like SCCM, you do an inventory with SCCM maybe once a month because it's so intense on those machines. So Stratosphere does an inventory every time that machine powers up. I've got full inventory, make, model, serial number, applications installed versus used. All of that data is already in Stratosphere. Take your security information. One of my customers actually built out a integration in ServiceNow 
So if you turn off your firewall, ServiceNow will op automatically open a ticket and you get a phone call. The HR, you also, get, you also get written up in that particular company for turning off your firewall. So a lot of good benefits for integrating that data and getting it in the hands of the frontline workers who, who can uh, really correlate that data for the end user and ha make them have a better day and resolve the question and the problem, hopefully on the first call. Next slide. This is the architecture, kind of how it works. So multiple Stratosphere platforms could be around the world. Um, you have what's called bent servers in your environment. Mid servers come from ServiceNow. They run on Windows or Linux. So we install the ServiceNow base integration kit into your ServiceNow instance. You also do it in your test instance as well, um, you know, multiple instances if, as you may have for testing. And then it'll connect through the mid servers to the Stratosphere API and directly to the database. So if I'm calling, I just need Wi-Fi statistics, the API is very good for that. But if I need to know CPU temperature for 10,000 machines, I'd want to do that with a SQL call. So multiple ways that the ServiceNow base integration kit can allow you to connect to Stratosphere and get that data into the hands of the ticketing people. Next slide. <coughs> Extending the life of PCs. So this, um, I was working with a bank and they uh, told us, hey, well, you can extend the life using this technology of your machines anywhere from six to 18 months. The CIO was in the room. He said, that's $3.4 million for me. He, I mean, he, these guys know these numbers. I replace 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 machines a year in my rotation cycle, and he knew the number off the top of his head. He said, if you can give me to six months, that's still $1.2 million. I'll take it. Next slide. And James, I think you came up with this little interesting article here. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so just just on this slide, Chris. Um, so I didn't know about um, the, you know, I this kind of the sustainability uh, benefits we had within Stratosphere UX. So, you know, obviously when it comes to PCs, um, e-waste is huge, and you know, as you can see here, generated towards the end of 2022 was 347.18 million metric tons of unrecycled e-waste. So anything that can reduce the amount of e-waste um, we produce is obviously a good thing. And that is one of the things which Stratosphere UX does. So maybe you can just expand a bit on how Stratosphere UX does that, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Next slide kind of goes through that. So take your simple task manager. Uh, bottom left-hand corner, I'm using Google Chrome to watch a video. And in Chrome, it's eating up 34% of my CPU. Then I need to flip over to Visio. Visio now becomes my in-focus application. So Stratosphere already had all this data. What's in focus? What's behind there? What each process is doing? How much CPU? About five years ago, we decided to act on this, actually start taking actions on this. And we came up with our process optimization and it runs inside the same very same agent that Stratosphere already has on your machine. And what we're doing is we're changing the base priority. This is very safe. It's not throttling. Not a big fan of throttling an application to CPU or anything like that because I've seen a lot of bad results. This is automatic. Your in-focus application is raised to above normal, and your background applications are set to low. So this has a huge effect on older hardware. So physical machines sitting in the field, optimizers running on my, my laptop, and I haven't asked for a new machine. I think this thing's five years old. It does exactly what I need. Optimizer makes sure my foreground applications are always above normal, and the little stuff in the background, SCCM updates, Intune updates, uh, my Snagit running in the background, it is basically set to a, a low priority. In the cloud or in virtual environments, it also has the same effect. So all those little background processes, I've seen people give people uh, give their users two CPUs when they really needed four, but the foreground application was above normal, so the user is like, hey, this works fine. So you're actually able to get away with cheaper hardware in the cloud or even in like a Citrix or Horizon environment, just by getting them two CPUs, engaging Optimizer. Now it doesn't work all the time, it depends on your application. This is not a you know, magic bullet or anything, but it does help to dramatically change the processes running on those. And six to 18 months of life cycle extension on a laptop or a desktop machine adds up really, really quick, as, as uh, James showed in the previous slide. 
all of that waste. We can extend it out, and yes, please do take your equipment and have them properly recycled. There's a lot of gold in those machines. Next slide. All right. Yep, so extending the life. So what happens what, when we need to extend life? The Windows OS churn, applications, moving them to hybrid, that, and ultimately the user experience. So we want to make sure, you know, I've got a three-year or four-year life cycle refl uh, replacement on my equipment, and I'm doing that so the users can run the latest software, the latest um, applications with all the graphics and, and pretty, uh, pretty diagrams and things like that. So by extending that life, I need to make sure my optimizer is properly engaged and it's working. So how do we prove this? Next slide, James. We've actually built some very impressive Power BI reports using our API. So we'll monitor your equipment, VDI, physical, virtual, whatever you're running, without optimizer engaged. And then we click a one button inside a stratosphere and monitor it for another week with optimizer engaged. And then we can actually prove the, the improvement, the user experience score, what's called CPU queuing, how many things are in the queue waiting to be processed. Notice CPU utilization isn't on there. CPU utilization stays the same. You would think we would lower it. It actually doesn't. CPU utilization actually stays the same. But the number of things in the queue trying to get to the processor is dramatically lowered. You know, 7.8%, that's a lot when you're talking about millions of things going through that queue every millisecond. Page file swapping, and then in some cases, we've also reduced disk queuing as well because the disk queue doesn't have to work so hard because those smaller back-end processes aren't doing as much. So yes, we can now, and this is, this is brand new, like in the last year, um, Thomas, our Power BI guy, has been able to pull the metrics out of Stratosphere and actually prove what it's doing. Because it has so little impact on the machine, we're only changing the base priority of the application, so almost zero overhead. And then this actually allows us to prove how Optimizer is helping your environment. Next slide. Assessing applications for migration strategy. So I want to move my users from physical machines to Amazon, Azure, Citrix, uh, Horizon, anywhere I need to move those, those users. I need to understand, first of all, what applications are there? How many do, am I dealing with? Then I need to know how are they using them? The accounting people had this one application they used to do pay, uh, payroll, and they only use it twice a month. If I miss that application, nobody's going to get a paycheck. Very important. So assessing these applications for their CPU load, versioning, you know, when I do the, these assessments, I find I've got 15 different versions of Chrome out there, uh, 30 different versions of Visio, um, hundreds of access databases that the IT staff had no idea about. James, you want to comment on this slide about the overview here? Yeah. So just basically what Chris has been saying, we have the ability within uh, Stratosphere and, and outputting it to Power BI to look at, um, you know, as we've got here, we've got the instances deployed, which is, you know, at 16,000, yet the instances used is only 6,000. So there's a huge discrepancy. And we can also, as Chris was talking about, we can see how many different version numbers were do done. And then we can actually even look at, you know, the users and how many applications a user actually uses, because obviously, and then we can determine what we're going to do with those. And then, you know, obviously, then we can look at which are the most used applications, as we've shown here. So um, in our most used applications, we can do the same with the least most uh, least used applications. Oh, sorry. And then we can also look at, you know, the amount of disk, the complexity of the application. Um, you know, obviously by utilizing Stratosphere, you can look at the complexity and see is the application a good candidate for maybe you're looking at, um, you know, FlexApp and moving those applications away from your base to reduce the number of base images you're utilizing. Um, and, and, you know, FlexApp has that ability to uh, decouple those applications away from the base layer and make your image management a lot simpler. So this just kind of gives you an overall view of um, everything Chris kind of touched on there. And then, you know, it's all about assessment when it comes to um, applications. You have to have a starting point. And, you know, with Stratosphere UX, we, we, we give you that starting point. Because, you know, we've heard it 
both myself and Chris have heard of this in projects over the years. It's just like, you know, someone tells you they have, oh, I think we have about 50 applications. Then you go and actually look at it and, you know, using something like Stratosphere and you can find out they have 300 or five or what, or like there's that one application, as Chris said, that's used once a month. I remember um, I worked for a company and we had a server farm dedicated to one application because it was a payroll application and it was used once a month and the capacity on that it was hammered for that one for the for like a two day period but if that application was not available you know people wouldn't have got paid so it was huge and and these are the types of applications and and that's the kind of granularity we give you with our, with stratosphere we can tell you all of the applications how often they're used when they're used and then that helps with that whole assessment so just to kind of um if we look at the uh sorry why won't it move yes so this is what you know as we as we said you know you can have a look um in a bit deeper and with this graph you can essentially change the parameters but look you've got a certain number say 917 applications you've got a certain number of versions and you can utilize um determine whether they go in the base image where they're eligible for flex app or whether they can be published um in using some other format you know you know delivered by citrix or, or something like that uh, so so just uh, the whole point of this is, is is essentially and we're actually going to be bringing out a white paper soon enough on a uh, application strategy because it's you know i've been to a bunch of um, events this year and applications are still all we're talking about it's 2023 someone keeps telling me that you know app you know uh, legacy apps are going to disappear well um i don't know what chris's view on it but mine is they ain't going anywhere anytime soon so yeah. um we have to look and and tools such as stratosphere and you know in tandem with flex app really help in um, in in an application strategy the example you know this we're talking about applications and who uses it <clears throat> but also stratosphere tracks what are they talking to so i've got a large hospital is currently separating from another large hospital so they're using our uh, our process inspection to determine what applications are talking to what servers if i yank that application out i got to bring the server and the data with it and then who's using the application is critical but i also need to know what other infrastructure is required to keep that application running Absolutely, and you know, an application is useless without the data that goes with it. So that's you know that that's critical in in your strategy. It's not just about the applications, as you said. It's about the infrastructure that's utilized and the data um, for those applications. Yeah, understanding what it's talking to, and then the latency. So if I'm in VDI and that database is in the data center, and then I move the users to Azure, but the database stays in Atlanta. Well, I've just added 30 or 40 milliseconds to that application. Now, Azure is going to fail because I didn't move the database with the application. Very critical. Yep. I see people do that all the time. Oh, ab absolutely. And, and, and you know, it, it, that's that just is not just application strategy. That plays then into your user experience because you're degrading your user experience. So this is all part of your strategy when you're planning, you know, a migration of your applications. Because the last thing you want to do is is degrade your user experience. Right. Yep. All right. Excellent. Security posture. So Stratosphere being a diagnostic tool, we pick up a huge amount of information. And right before COVID, we actually started getting the um, uh, Wi-Fi statistics, security information. So we actually had this right before everybody was sent home. So you you bought 10,000 laptops and everybody home and their kids are playing on the machine. They've cracked the machine. They put their own ID on there. They've turned off the firewall, installed all kind of crazy applications. Stratosphere can actually monitor this. And we've been doing this for years. Not Stratosphere is not a security tool, but we have a lot of that data. So next slide. So understanding what the security posture of your company is. You probably already have five, six, seven agents. Do you, are they running? So is the antivirus actually turned on, turned off? Guess what? Most anti antivirus programs don't send you an alert saying I'm shut down. So knowing that Stratosphere can actually see all the processes running on that machine. The firewall is enabled, the drive encryption, secure boot, um, how your Wi-Fi uh, encryption is. 
So you're actually encrypted. Do you use a secure uh, encryption on your Wi-Fi? We can see all of that data. And then again, post that into other platforms, Tableau, Power BI, ServiceNow, you pick it using our API, you can pull all of that data out of the platform. Next slide. And we're, now we're going to do a demonstration. Yep. All right. out of the way and we'll kill that all right can you see my screen here Ray? Um, james yep i can right. indeed all right so this is the long-awaited user uh rewrite of our interface uh we are shooting for q late q3 early q4 for the release of this so this is six seven i'm currently showing this is a live beta site that we're working on right here so first notice the left hand side the navigation very clean inside the environment let me Move that, get this out of the way. All right, and you've got your more navigation on the top right. <clears throat> so a complete rewrite, new language, everything. This will be 6.7 of Stratosphere coming out uh, in late Q3, early Q4. One of the things you're gonna notice here is there's not a lot of tables. So in the old version of Stratosphere or our current shipping version of Stratosphere, everything is table driven. There's, there is a few graphs and things like that that uh, allow you some very nice visualization. But this version is more all about the um, uh, user experience and being able to highlight and see, oh, there's the red right there. I can see it. I've got some yellow over here. So I'm actually able to see at a higher level and navigate to my problem based on graphics, making the product more usable by more people. Top right-hand corner, you can sort them by, I like prefer, my, myself, I prefer the high to low severity. So bring the, the problem issues to the top. And these, these slides will actually slide around. Go to my resource tab here. Notice how fast this is also updating. So this, we're updating the, uh, the backend API as well to, to make it uh, perform better. So in here, you know, I can see I've got a CPU contention problem. I'm gonna drill down on CPU contention. This is now gonna show me everything from the CPU core speeds that I have out there to the number of people with different monitors. So maybe it's just a resolution issue. People with four monitors are having a worse problem than people with one monitor. And then we're even gonna add in recommendations. So pop out our recommendations and things like my spot check documents that I have on the, uh, on the community site will be put into here. Recommendations from Microsoft, VMware, Citrix. So we see you're running a Citrix platform. We see that you have um, slow logins. You may wanna take a look at this article from Microsoft to potentially resolve it. So better navigation through the user experience to allow me to um, basically get to the problem a lot faster with a visual look and feel. Now we're still gonna have the ability to look at our detailed views. So we're rewriting that as well. So the detailed views would be the, you know, down to the individual metrics in the, in the system as well. And this is a lag because of my Starlink connection here. So you still will be able to, uh, this is the new rewrite of the advanced inspector. Notice here, I can easily add and remove columns. You can't do that in old version. So I can add and remove columns on my system. I can then even save this screen. So I wanna save this so that I can keep come back to it later and maybe even make it my default. So my default navigation, I'm responsible for HR. So I'm gonna build out a dashboard for me that's only my users and be able to look at just my users across their environment and only the columns that I need to see on the screen. Then I can even share that. You can have a fully that. customized uh, dashboard then, Chris. Yeah, yep, sure can. And, and you save it, tag it as your default, and you can come back, mm -hmm. even import it. So I could write one on my system, email it to you, and you could import it and then share it with your other uh, friends. Now this one is called the individual view, and this is still be being worked on, so this is a work in progress. But think of a task manager. Show me the CPU memory disk network, uh, number of monitors, my display resolutions, and things like that. Give me the ability to search and pick on an individual machine or an individual user. So a really granular way to look at in a simplified environment and actually drawing your eye to it. So that the the CPU utilization gets over 80%. This actually turns red. So color coding this data. So I'm looking at you know an individual user. Chris Walker. What is Chris Walker's machine? 
how many machines does he own, what is the um, you know, OU, all of that information that Stratosphere would have available to it. Then we have more you know, configuration information down here, so basically rewriting the entire interface to make it much more usable uh, for our, our customers and really so that you don't have to be a, a scientist to read all of the, the metrics and the data inside of Stratosphere. All right, that's pretty much it, James. I'm going to. That's stop. that's excellent. Uh, you know, I I I think it's um you know obviously I I've seen it a few times now, but I I really like how it's all simplified and it, it it's so much easier to kind of see visually everything that you want to um you want to look at. So I I think I think that's really beneficial um to people and and the fact that you know as you said even the dashboards are customizable. That's a huge thing for people that you know you don't have to constantly go and and recreate a dashboard. It's there and it's saved. So I think that's going to be really good. So yeah. yeah. There's a the there's a lot thing, to come. Yeah. The biggest thing you know everybody tells us we have a massive amount of data. Can you put it all on one screen? No, you wouldn't be able to read it. <laughs> you know, your Wi-Fi statistics right next to your CPU temperature, you wouldn't be able to read it. So we're working very diligently with a, um, our developers to design the UI so that it navigates you to the issue as fast as possible. Don't give me 10,000 numbers and 15,000 metrics. Help me navigate to where the problem is through a graphical interface. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. Because you know, it, there's never been an issue with the amount of data Stratosphere has collected. It's been how do I get to it as quickly as possible, and I think the new UI really answers that and delivers what you need as quickly as possible. You know, in it, as you showed in the demo, you know, almost instantaneously, and then you can drill down into that. But it does give you a really good high level overlook at what's going on. So yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot to come me. from Stratosphere this year, so uh, yeah. 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 Customers constantly ask me, "How many metrics do you have?" And I don't think we've actually counted. Um, <laughs> but even even just just in the past two months, we added a new metric. We had a hospital on the west coast, and they needed to know all the badge scanners and power mics that were plugged into their their 20,000 workstations because they'd lost them. They'd lost inventory. They didn't know where they were plugged in. So we updated the Stratosphere agent, and all of about three weeks. And we were able to then uh, run a report and show them every device that had a USB, something plugged into the USB port, and the product ID and the vendor ID, which allowed them to then have a full inventory uh, in their system. It's just one more metric that we've added to Stratosphere. It has nothing to do with diagnostics. That's pure inventory asset management. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Listen, any questions? We do have a question. Well, we have one that's a little bit more of a comment. It's, can you use that data to generate a report to help solve problems the users are having and to show, but then it cut off? Yes, yes, definitely. So that's the whole goal of Stratosphere, taking that data either in a dashboard or in one of the detailed views and using it to resolve issues. And, and on top of that, so, Kristen's having a problem with her workstation, and we come to find out it's a particular mouse driver on her workstation. Flip that upside down, look at all of the machines that are like hers running that same version so we can tell the SCCM team to go fix all these other users that aren't complaining. They didn't open a help desk ticket. They're just, they're just dealing with it. Kristen, on the other hand, she doesn't deal with anything. Don't make her mad. So we got her fixed, and we flip the data upside down and find out all the other people having the problem. And then we prevent, you know, 5,000 people from calling in with a ticket because we fixed the issue for Kristen, and then we're able to identify everybody else that had the same problem. That's the goal of Stratosphere. Flip the data upside down. You know, one person, 10 people complaining. I better go look at all my data and see who else is having this issue. They just didn't call in. Good. Uh, one other comment here we had, what I would love to see is, what is the download upload speeds for our users' home internet connection that ah. would expand on the insight for our endpoint devices? That will be added. You know, that's a great straight man right there. Um, so in 6.7, we are going to be doing a speed test, to probably to like speedtest.net or something like that. I don't do it periodically. So yeah, that's a big question. They want to know what their upload download speed is at their houses. You know, we've got their Wi-Fi statistics and all the other information. So, yes, in 6.7, coming out later this year, there will be a speed test uh, run from that workstation 
Uh, again, you can pick it by you know, only machines outside my network or machines in the network. So multiple ways of turning that on and off. It will be off by default, by the way. Also yep. worth mentioning, Chris, that um, obviously later this year, we will have command control being released. And command control does, you know, as, as we said, it's a real, real-time real remediation tool. And we'll be able to give you your real-time um, statistics on your Wi-Fi. And it's just one yep. of the many metrics which command control will handle. So, you know, we, we've seen that Stratosphere UX, as I said, lots of data, lots of historical data. But just to have that kind of real-time look for um, metrics and remediation, so this is what the gap that we think uh, command control is going to fill. Yep. And a lot of people ask, you know, why would I have both, right? Well, command control is a command and control product. Reach out, remote control, remediate, stop services, things like that. It will yep. not tell you all the other people having that problem. That's what Stratosphere. Stratosphere collects probably three times the amount of metrics as command control. But command control is designed for me to hop onto Kristen's machine, do a remote control, install that driver for her, stop a service, and then I'm done. So it's a help desk type, type function. <clears throat> then yeah. I can use Stratosphere to analyze and find out who else is having this issue or potentially going to have this problem. Exactly. Yep. Very good. Um, those are all I have here for the questions portion. Oh, someone did ask, I saw something about the service now. It is a one-time fee. It's very inexpensive uh, when you buy Stratosphere. It's a small fee and it is a one-time fee um, to uh, to get the uh, ServiceNow connector as well. All right, you wrap it I up. Just I just received another question. With yeah. such a large number of changes coming in Stratosphere, will we be able to take some sort of formalized training to get familiar with the system? I'm just getting started with the product as it is today, so it's all very overwhelming. We have two, actually three different methods. So we have our training.liquidware.com. So we'll be updating some, some videos on there. And then we also, I do a lot of personal training with customers. Basically, you buy a block of hours. I will come in and train you on administration, navigation, my spot check methodology, methodology dashboard creation, all kind of customized da uh, training services. And then we have a professional offering as well. That's an eight-hour class maximum of 10 people because they actually sit you down with a, a full demo system and he goes through and presses every button inside of Stratosphere. It's very intense, detailed level training. So depending on what you need, um, just reach out to your sales uh, sales representative and they will be glad to hook you up with whatever you need. Good, great answer. Okay. James, did you have any other any other information? No, I think I, I think we've given a good overview of um, the use cases we wanted to do and um, hopefully they're being beneficial to people and, you know, um, reach out to us if you want more information. Yes, exactly. Thanks everyone for joining today. If you do have questions, sales at liquidware.com or marketing at liquidware.com and we will direct you to the right person. Uh, you will receive a link to the recording within a few business days. James and Chris, thanks so much for your time today and for your presentation. And uh, everyone have a great day. Thanks for joining thanks. us. Take care. Bye. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everyone.